Good day to all our viewers all around the world and welcome to a new thing brought to you by Global Business Roundtable. My name is Cindy Mabi. I'm an ambassador for the Global Business Roundtable and also the Global Fund for Jesus and your host for today. It is uh, very exciting to be in your audience and looking forward to discussing a very pertinent issue in society, that of child-headed households. And we're joined by our esteemed panelists and I'll just ask the our, our panelists to introduce themselves, starting from my extreme left, Your Excellency, if you'll just tell us what you do in relation to GBR or even in society. Thank you very much, Cindy. It truly is a privilege to be here. Lina Kitabang Mashiko, Kiletabole Tabisang. I am a character development specialist. We help individuals, organizations, and enterprises define uh, who they truly are, which then informs, you know, what kind of market they are looking for and uh, in terms of profitability and substance generation. Um, I am also the CEO of Altitude Connection, which is an enterprise and project management facilitation and training. I'm an international speaker and an author as well. Welcome, Your Excellency Tabang, and Your Excellency Shabalala, if you'll introduce yourself, please. Thank you for having me, Cindy. My name is Mbongseni Shabalala. I am a researcher, I'm a counsellor and a theologian by training and a youth development specialist. Uh, I'm with a company called Intradev Solutions. We do research, M&E, that's monitoring and evaluation, and we do training and development. But I'm also with Seed Time and Harvest, which is an NGO focusing on youth development, on empowerment and skills development. Thank you. You're most welcome, Your Excellency. Uh, good morning. My name is Kadi. I am a social worker by profession, being in the profession for more than 30 years. For the past 10 years, I have been working privately. Uh, recently, we have been accredited to train social auxiliary workers. And in GBR, I am in the Committee for Social Services Development. Welcome to you and Your Excellency Mpumi. Good day, my name is Mpumi Gwinza. I'm a social worker working for one of the mining companies. I'm providing counseling to children and families, gained experience uh, from social development as a social worker, uh, legally placing children in foster care and child aided households. Um, currently, an excellency with uh, GBR, and I'm heading one of the social services in the chapters. Thank you, Excellencies, again for participating in today's program. It is one of those social ills where history will harshly judge us that of now having child-headed families being prominent in society. Let's just start by defining what a child-headed family is, Your Excellency. I think when you talk of a child-headed family, we are talking of, of a situation where a parent, a caregiver, are not there, they have died or are terminally ill, and the child has to assume the role and the responsibility that essentially has to be taken care of by the parent. You know, this is a deviation from the norm because in terms of the norm, we know that parents are the ones who have to take care of children. However, when we come to uh, child-headed households, it's the child who's taking the responsibility, as I've just said. So we're talking about children that are not of consensual age. They're not uh, eligible to vote, so they would be uh, typically under the age of 16. Uh, Your Excellency, or was it um, even younger than yes. that? Yes, yes. Children that are, 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 are heading those households are under the age of 18. Uh, they are given the roles and responsibilities, as Excellency Khadi has mentioned, to 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 care for their uh, siblings, younger siblings. The currently they are the, the, the placements are legalized in South Africa. They receive social assistance grants so as to support and encourage them to continue with the placements. Mm. 
But, but just the impact of child-headed families in society, and we know that it is largely amongst the African uh, communities uh, where due to social pressures or uh, illness that we, we now face with child-headed families, what, what impact does this have on society or the next generation of children that are, are brought up in this environment? Your Excellency Taba. Sure. If I can just extend on, on what has been defined. If we look at the context of what child-headed household is, it's, it's a child that leads a home prematurely. So you need to understand that the premature leadership can happen in three contexts. First, it's the social economic factors, which have been previously mentioned by their excellencies. This could be sickness and disease. This could also be death, early mortality. This could also be, you know, a lack of uh, resources. The second is divorce and separation. Now, we also need to understand that a child leading a family can also be a very spiritual phenomena. You find parents that are present physically, but absent spiritually. And this is where we see that a child is actually taking over um, a certain role of leadership. And the third context is when we look at child soldiers and child labor in Africa, when a child is working before a legal age or legal time so as to provide resources and finance in the family. So the impact here is, is very vast, Cindy. And if I can explain this in the context of um, behaviorism and mannerism, Dr. Mbongisen would, would understand this very well as a psychologist as well. When I look at you as an adult, it gives me an indication of your childhood. So when we look at the life cycle of a human being, there are nine cycles of life. And just to keep it brief, from the age of zero to nine years old, there's something that we call your air zone. Now, your air zone is a part whereby you teach a child certain values, you expose them. It's, it's a process of freedom. That's why a lot of child are children are very naughty during that time. They want to touch certain things. Yeah, they want to experience certain things. It's a blank canvas that things. you then populate. Absolutely. Because they are in the zone of exposure and freedom. When you get to age nine to 18, we call your water zone. Now, water is fluid, yeah? And when we believe in the fluidity of water, you know that it's where values and beliefs are being set. So now the impact of having child-headed households is who is there to set the foundation of the values and the beliefs? Mm. Who is there to then expose this child? Because exposure in life is the turning point. If you've never been overseas, Udulako Kasi, you will never, you will only know Kasi, <laughs> you know, township experiences. So it's, it's who is then the custodian or the guardian to then expose this child and then shape their perspective of life. And this is where role models, coaches and mentors come in. I'll leave it yeah. at that for now. Yeah, yeah. just your, your input, Your Excellency, and especially when we say that it may be a, a spiritual phenomenon, as, as Excellency Tabang is saying, that um, children have the qualities uh, to, to also lead, albeit that they put in these uh, circumstances prematurely. Is there any good that can come out of it? Yes and no. The yes part is that because they are already in that circumstances, placed in that environment or in that situation, they'll have to hit the ground rolling and running and, and find a way to survive. So in a way, yes, they, they do survive and do, we do know of cases. Social workers could attest to that, that they do survive, but no, in that they, they are forced in that circumstances. So as Excellency Tawang has said, they, they are not going through the normal status of development. Mm. They are forced in the space of being adults when they are, when they are still children. So they, they, it's, a, it's a dual role that they're playing. They are both children, but they're also adults because of the responsibility and the role that they're playing at that time. Mm. So it, 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 it creates a problem for them in terms of development. Mm. Mm. Uh, let's look at some of the circumstances why we have this phenomenon. Um, um, uh, most of the child ha child-headed families or households due to HIV AIDS related uh, illnesses and, and disease? Yes, a lot of times it's, uh, it's, it's because of that. However, the we, we, we find in other families where parents will abandon children, they will leave them to fend for themselves. However, as I've just said, HIV has, it's a major, major contributor where we find in children uh, I have to hate or a child has to hate he, uh, the, the, the family. Hmm. So, so what, what happens to these children, if, especially if they they're, they're not documented or registered, you're not aware that there is a, a child-headed household. 
uh, uh, how widespread is your, your, your database? Um, we've got uh, community organizations that are, are always, you know, uh, educated in terms of reporting when there are uh, situations like that. We, uh, as care, care caregivers or social workers, try to reach to all the, the, the community members. And whenever there is a, a death in the uh, home affairs, we, we also liaise with them to say, who is now going to take a responsibility? Home affairs works with social development to identify such cases and report them. Hmm. Let's go back to, to the character and, and building. If you're not exposed to certain um, workshops or, or even uh, academia or you know any influence outside of the, the limitations of your space, what chance do these children have in that kind of environment in life? Your Excellency. Yeah. yeah, I see he was lifting his finger, <laughs> so I, I would... No, no, no yeah, I, just, I just wanted to come in on, <laughs> the, on, the, on the impact that the social workers were talking about. They, they were talking mostly, you, you asked a question about the, the cause of it. Not only is HIV, I know that the focus for this, for this discussion is, is mostly South Africa. But if you look at the case of Rwanda, for instance, 1994, you had the genocide of close to 100,000 of young people who were displaced in just a go like that. Mm. Now, those young people, they were forced by the circumstances at that time to, to fend for themselves. They had no homes, so the, the classical definition of a household changed at that moment during that genocide period. So the, the, the definition itself of, of a household needs to be redefined for, for social work, for social development, to be broader than the classical four-room or the space that you occupy. Yeah. Uh, Madam Tabang Mashiko, earlier on you were just talking about not only developing the character, but the need for assistance from a government point of view. We know that in South Africa, at least, there seems to be workshops, academies, and NGOs that are present, but there's always room to do more individually in our corners, in corporate, uh, you know, what, what, what is it that uh, we, we can still do to, to impact the lives of these young people? Sure. You know, Cindy, there's one adage that I, I live by, that there's safety in love and compassion. It's not about receiving love, giving love, but it's about sharing it. And, you know, a child doesn't have to come from you. They can come through you. So even if it means in your own corner, you adopt a child and they don't have to physically stay with you. But even just once in a month, twice a month, you know, check on the child. If you do talks at, you know, underprivileged schools, let's go back to where we come from, you know. Let's go back to where we were nurtured before. If it means also training, you know, um, custodians uh, or, or parents or guardians who are taking care of these children, we can do that. It's not, I mean, Mercedes-Benz has got an amazing program of developing leadership skills amongst um, principals of rural communities and rural schools. So it's not just about the government doing something or individual, it's about forming a coalition mm. between private sector, government and individual. Where is the relationship there? Yeah. Yeah, th there's also the uh, academy you were talking about from a, a local point of view, Your Excellency. But taking it beyond that, so there isn't over-reliance on, on government. Wha what kind of uh, programs are you running in that space? Let me, let me just come in there. I, I don't know if it's an it's a, it's a issue of, of programs, Cindy. It's, it's you, you, in your intro, you talked about these young people who are not employed and some are not employable by virtue of being where they are, mm. they, there's no, there are no resources. They, you know, I, I, in most cases, Gauteng, Gauteng is, the, is the smallest in terms of space, but it's most populous because there's a notion that you go to Gauteng, the city of gold, everything is in Gauteng. So the emphasis of, of people leaving their locale and come to look for employment, it creates a problem instead of taking what kind of, what, whatever, whatever yeah. help that you can to where the people are. So my, my take would be creation of industries instead of people coming to Gauteng to look for 
employment opportunities. Yeah. Or to but but because we are a global network, Your Excellency, so Gauteng would be the equivalent of a metropolis, or rather big city mentality where people look, move from uh, the, the rural areas to seek economic empowerment or opportunities in the city. I understand that. Yeah. But then it, 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 it creates a vacuum in the places where people are coming from. Gauteng cannot accommodate everyone because Gauteng being one province, you have nine provinces. If people from Northern Cape from Northwest and all the provinces come to Gauteng. Mm. What happens in the provinces where they come from? There are no industries there. People are then forced to come to one place to look for employment and, and they can only take but so much. The so point I was making is that we, we broadcast, we beam to the entire world. So for locality or just the geography, if people don't know what Gauteng is, uh, if they're watching us from New York or North Carolina, for example, so it's just a big city uh, mentality. Okay. Correct. You know. The, from, from the yeah, <laughs> but but I, I get your point that you know if if we look at opportunities where we are in the immediate, uh, as opposed to moving you know to already developed areas. O already developed. Those places will remain undeveloped mm. until somebody decides to put industries there, establish industries there, and incapacitate th those young people to be employed where they are, so that those pe those areas will be known. How yeah. is known everywhere in in the in in the country and in the world. Yeah. Because of what is supposedly offering. Yeah, the the impact on the next generation. If we if we don't have structured interventions uh, early on, we talk about having the youngest population on the African continent. We talk about passing on the baton to a younger breeding, a younger caliber of leadership. But if there, there's a majority of them, or, or many of them, that are in this uh, uh, space, what what kind of economy are we then? going to have and what kind of a society are we going to well have? I, I think we are going to peddle, we are going to have a problem. I just like the point that she made in terms of us encouraging people to adopt. This is one, this is one aspect that is in our policy, the social <coughs> services uh, uh, department policy in GBR, to say we want to encourage people you know, to, to adopt a child, exactly as you said it, that you don't have to stay with this child, but just go in there to find out exactly what is happening with them. We are going to talk to communities. As we are talking to you now, being viewers, we are actually encouraging you to come on board because GBR has laid a platform where we will be able to do what we are saying in terms of getting people who will adopt these children. We know wherever you are, you want to help and then we are giving you the platform. We are definitely going to do that because we have other departments in GBR where we are saying these are going to be, they are going to be our stakeholders. We were looking at women of character to say they are the, they, we will ask them to adopt a child, men of integrity, uh, uh, women of character to adopt a daughter, men of integrity to adopt a son. We do not want to make it a gender issue. However, if it has to happen that they, the, a, a mother adopts a son, but at the end of the day, we want to be at a, a point where there isn't any child or a, a, a house-headed child who doesn't have any person in the community that are going to mentor or help them one way or the other, because we understand that even economically, they are not going to be able to fend for themselves. But if there is that somebody who will supervise them in all aspects, in all mm. areas, things will definitely be better. Sure. Yeah. Uh, if, if I can, just from an economic point of view, currently statistics state that 30% of the population is young people. By 2020, we'll leave or move to 60%. Instead of also looking at the problematic areas, there are programs around around funding young entrepreneurs. You look at whether it's Investec, you look at the IDC. So also in adopting a child, you then say, what is it that you love that you're willing to work for? Mm. And when they identify what they love, because in the industry and in business, people would rather buy something that is the best quality, but the best comes from the love and the passion. So if we are then able to equip and feed kids, they are then able to develop strategies and business models that mm -hmm. will then bring money and profit for them. So in adopting a child, we need to nurture their careers, nurture their talents as well. Mm -hmm. And from an economic perspective, young people are holding the economy of, mm -hmm. co of the continent of Africa. The only way the African economy can be resuscitated is through entrepreneurship. So if we teach kids business from school, mm -hmm. then, then we are gone. As, as, as a generation.
you're watching a new thing brought to you by Global Business Roundtable, talking about child-headed households and what uh, the church communities, the believers ought to do to try and rectify this anomaly uh, in, in, in society. And we're joined by esteemed panelists. Uh, we have uh, Madam Tabang Mashiko, Her Excellency, and uh, Mbomi Gwinza. Uh, we have Mr. Mbongiseni Shabalala and Mekhadi Leo Bing. Now, we were, were talk, talking about the prevalence. You were saying that the numbers statistically have increased of child-headed families in society. And what impact will this, will this have going forward? Your Excellency Shabalala. Yes, thanks. The, the, the numbers, the, the, the child-headed household, I would look at the macro, macro level. That is the South African, because there's a, there's a, there's a, continental version and there's also the the world statistics but within south africa itself the 2008 statistics says the number is increasing and the complexity of it is broader than what it was when it was first reported of the child headed household so the impact it impacts on on our economy and impacts on our the social strata of of the society in that the definition of a of, of a household and, and, and the economy that comes with it mm. is impacted by by the by the escalation of, of the numbers of, of child headed households. Yeah. Mm. W what does the Bible teach us though in terms of prevention of, of having child headed families in the first place? Um, and I suppose that would be the transformation of one's mind in the sense that uh, as as a believer you take on a, a new character. You know, you're no longer the same creation or creature. Wha what does it teach us about having child-headed households being so prevalent in society? Mm, the Bible discourages separation of, of families. And unfortunately, because of the causes of uh, child-headed uh, households, which has might be the epidemic diseases that you are uncontrollable, it's difficult to say we cannot allow kids to be in this situation. But we need the support of everyone to show the love, to show care from almost everybody. When there is a problem is in a certain family, each and every individual should jump and assist to avoid situations whereby children end up caring for themselves. But mm -hmm. getting some elderly people people from church that, are, that will be of assistance. Mm. But I mean, if the programs, the intervention or preventative programs haven't worked, you said 2008 mm. to date, the numbers have almost doubled. If doubled, not, yes. Yeah, well it's quadrupled. It's, it's, it's increasing, but it's not getting the necessary coverage. Because let's be frank, the, there's no money in people who are unemployed who are unemployable. So the media is not covering it, so is the so society doesn't care that much about it. But as, as my sister just said, it is an epidemic that unless and until we decide as a society to deal with it, mm. it's going to be as, as problematic as the AIDS virus and, and it which has... You know what concerns me, Excellency? So it, it's as if we're manufacturing a generation of people that are going to be poor, unemployed, because of the circumstances that they're finding themselves in. So clearly, there's a, a disjoint in how the programs are aiming to affect this phenomenon of childholded households if we see them more growing more than, than, than uh, them d diminishing. So wh where is the disjoint sure. in your view? I, if, if I can chip, chip in, Doctor. Um, you know, ideology sells. That was a key strategy that was used in colonialism. Uh, you know, when the colonizers anchored Africa, they used three principles, commercialization, capitalism, and Christianity. Now, in, in your previous episode of uh, discussions, I'd noticed that there was a colonial Christianity that was divine and a current one. Now, the whole aim is with the church, churches are selling ideology. And you know, the world, even in business, ideology is commercialized. Now, the whole aim here is we need to stop being a generation that is ideological and start being a generation or a people that will then produce results. So we have so many programs, quantity-orientated, but we don't zoom into quality. 
and this is the issue that that we have whether it's in from an organizational perspective or whether it's in church now also the aim when we bring in the context of christianity we need to stop nurturing spirit-filled individuals and start nurturing or teaching people to be spirit controlled now there's a difference mm. when you're filled with the spirit but not controlled by it there's a disjuncture so the control comes with saying there is already something in you there is already a God in you that teaches you to then create. Now, when you create, you then have the ability to convert. So we have programs that are speaking about creation, but not conversion. And that's why we have a lot of them that are just, you know, smoke screens in the air. Mm. Your Excellency, do you want to add on to that? To piggyback, back yeah, on what Tabang is saying about the, the ideology. Y your question is about the church and the role that it should play or what the Bible says about nurturing mm. a child. The church has lost the campus of nurturing a child because the topic talks about child-headed households. Now, those people, unfortunately, they cannot tithe. Mm. They cannot bring in the tithe or the money in the church. So instead of focusing, coupling with the, with the social workers and, and saying, what, the, what are the social ills? What is it that is, is, is affecting the society not to function well. The church focuses on who's bringing in more, more money in, in the church. So it, it, it impacts then on the society, on, on the economy of the, of the society as a whole. Yeah. So, so Your Excellency, I mean, it, uh, we, we obviously it has to find mm -hmm. one, uh, it, it's not a one size fits all kind of approach, but a more meaningful uh, intervention. Madam Tabang saying that ideology and one thing sells, but it's more about the quality, the output, than what it is about the, the quality. In, in essence, what you're saying is that now there has to be a relationship within, between professionals and the church. Mm. Probably there's that spark or that element that the church has lost. And I, I, I believe if people come forth, if people come on board to say, where have we lost it as a church? Because God is expecting a church to do to, or to make a difference in these children's lives. And if the church fails, Definitely we're going to have a society or a community where things are just going to be the way they are. So now we are saying, or we're wanting to say, let us work together. Let us bring back that spark from the church or in the church to say, these are the children, what is it that you can do as a church? We, we know some of the church, we, we, we're not saying all churches. Yes, I believe yes, not no, all no, churches. no, no, no. Yes, yes. That's but but the, the mission, the saltness of saying, you are the salt of the world. You know what what the salt does to to food That's it, it. It, it it makes Gives the taste. food taste better yep. the society is doesn't taste nice at the moment because the people who are supposed to carry to take that baton to the world is not doing it remember we are waiting the church is waiting for the society to come to the church instead of the church going to the society and said what is it what are the social ills mm -hmm. what is that make the society not to have the salt that it's supposed in to be. In the marketplace, yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the people who are in the church are the people. Yes. They are the members of society. So mm. we're taking the very same people, they go to church. Mm. So how are we going to balance yeah. that? Mm. And they so what you're saying is that the people who are mm. aware that there is the social ill that mm. is taking place, let us work with those people. Let us form you know, groups. Let us go out there, find ways <sighs> of saying, forward we go because this is a social ill that we do not want to see yeah. happening. Her Excellency Tabang was talking about being spirit-filled as opposed to being spirit-led, and that if your steps are not guided, you do not get your strength from God, and you don't look to Him uh, to, to for provision or, or any other need. Uh, th this is where we tend to be derailed. Because the spirit-filled, if I'm understanding you, it's that anointing that comes on a Sunday after everybody's... It's external. Yeah. It's imposed on you. Correct. Spirit control comes from your relationship with who God has revealed himself to you. Mm -hmm. So how Not do we apply that, Jackson? Excellence? We emulate it. We, we let it rub off uh, on, on, on everyone so that we, we have a, a healthier community and, and uh, better households. You when know, James is saying we should not only be hearers, but doers of the word. Mm. So as soon as we are able to do what the word says, we will make a difference. And coming back to what you said, once we draw our relationship from God and we say, God, this is the situation, he will definitely take charge. Somewhere, somehow we get discouraged. And, you know, we are not supposed to be at that point where we, ca we, we, we get discouraged. Mm. And, and I mean, to preach to somebody who's hungry and destitute, 
and deprived mm. Mm. without physically doing something. Doing yeah. something. That in itself no. it is work. not a true reflection of God's It doesn't work. That's very mm. true. It doesn't work. That is mm. very true. Yeah. So what is expected of, of us as as as, as The believers? church going to the people, not the church expecting the people to come. Mm. If, 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 this cup, if, if this room is 500, we will rather extend this room to be 1,000 instead of taking this 500 to where the people are. The mm. social is not in the church. People mm. from outside come in the church with those and they go back with, the, with, with, with that sickness Same without end. dealing with it. Mm. Because the message is, is not about empowering the people, but it's about making people to be spirit-filled, yeah. feel good. And not spirit-controlled. Not spirit control mm. and then when you and then you tithe more and then when you tithe more your focus is on you and, and mm. so the spirit controlled is about going to where the issues are and wh the issues are not in the church your excellencies i really really appreciate we're truly blessed to have had you uh, today and thank you so much for your your insight and wisdom and to our viewers at home we thank you very much for tuning in and if you have any queries you're welcome to visit our website globalbusinessroundtable.com at globalbusinessroundtable.com one word or you can email us comments at a new thing.tv comments at a new thing.tv and remember at all times seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Quoting from Matthew 6, verse 33. Thank you again for joining us. May you be abundantly blessed and we'll see you next time.